me, part of coming to eco-psychology was recognizing that my own healing and growth and development came in large part through the natural world. I would add in there also um, some really profound experiences that I had personally on uh, backpacking trips and solo wilderness trips that gave me a sense that I could only call unconditional love. That the root of all that's happening, all the beauty and all the noises and all the sounds and the richness of the world, that those roots are all in some kind of unconditional acceptance and inclusion and love. Now there was a second avenue that brought me to eco-psychology. That goes back to um, an evening. I had just put my son to bed. He was probably six years old. This was in the, uh, oh, probably the early 80s, maybe the late 1970s. And a few minutes later, I heard him crying in bed, so I went to find out what was bothering him. He said he was afraid of a nuclear war. And the best I could do was to say, son, I'm going to do my very best to make sure that there's not a nuclear war. And that was enough of a satisfaction for him. And I held true to that. So for a number of years, one of my major professional engagements was um, studying, writing about the psychological effects of nuclear war, the prospect of nuclear war, preparing for nuclear war. Now, in um, oh, sometime in the 80s, as the immediate threat of nuclear war began to wane, I looked around and asked myself, so what, what's the new risk? What's going to wake kids up in bed and scare them so much that they can't sleep? And the answer that came was environmental problems. And so my emphasis shifted from, somewhat from nuclear issues to environmental issues. And I began to look around for how we were doing environmental action. How were we convincing people to uh, be more uh, sophisticated and more sustainable, really, in their environmental action? I found some work by Theodore Rozak in a book called The Voice of the Earth, where he was suggesting that we need to shift from a model based on shame, blame, anxiety, fear, to a model based on essentially love and devotion and that deep psycho-emotional bond between humans and the natural world. These as a basis for environmental action. So that's the other. There's two paths for me. One is my own sort of healing and growth in the natural world. The other being a way to engage environmental action that will serve us better for the long term.